All right. Hello and welcome to Tech Wednesday. Uh, today we'll be talking about virtual travel. You might have signed up for this when it was scheduled for April 20th, a couple of weeks ago, Tuesday. Uh, my apologies for the technical difficulties that prevented me from presenting on that day. Uh, but we'll be covering that material today instead. And for those who weren't able to make it to the new time, there will be a recording. And everyone who was registered either for the previous date or for this date, since it's all the same event technically, will receive the link via email. You can ask questions as we go along via chat or Q&A. That should either be at the top or bottom of your screen, most likely depending on what platform you're using. If you have technical issues, you can try to send those questions my way as well. If you would like to ask a question on voice, I will be taking those at the end. And you can either put something in chat or use the raise hand gesture to indicate that you would like to talk at that point. Um, if there's some sort of tangential questions via text, I may hold those until later as well. Library updates. So as you may be aware, both locations, this is South San Francisco Main Library and South San Francisco Grand Avenue Library are now open for browsing. Main is open seven days a week, grand is I believe six days a week, and somewhat more restricted hours than prior to the shelter in place. Um, additionally, computers are only available for you to use at the Community Learning Center, which is at 520 Tamarack Lane in South San Francisco. They do require appointments, and if you would like to get an appointment, you may call 650 877-8540. They'll have a few questions for you and you can get that set up. At all three of those locations, masks are required. We also provide hand sanitizer. Um, and if you arrive and realize you've forgotten your mask, we do have masks on hand uh, of the you know, disposable surgical variety, which you can use. And our hours are on our website, which I can show you later. I will send that link in the email as well, but I imagine you all got that in your newsletter because I think most people who come to these events are subscribed to the newsletter. We're going to be covering three main resources today, which are Google Earth, Radio Garden and Google Arts and Culture. Google Earth you might be familiar with because I did a class on it previously. Um, there's a web and a downloadable version and I'll be talking mostly about the downloadable version. Okay, someone says I'm having issues with my volume. It feels to me as though I'm talking pretty loudly. Uh, if you are able to turn up the volume on your end, that might help. But uh, let me know if there are further issues. I will try to articulate because I think if I were to yell, it would just be unpleasant. Okay, so some people are finding that my audio is clear. That's good to hear. For the person who said I was too quiet, you might want to see if you can raise your system volume. That's all I can say. Okay. Um, yeah, so Google Earth, I'll be covering the downloadable version, which is free, mainly. Radio Garden is a website where you can listen to radio from around the world. And Google Arts and Culture is a website that has a lot of virtual exhibits and so forth. We've also been asked to cover this information in our, uh, in our presentations now. What can you do if you're vaccinated? If you've been able to be vaccinated and it's been two weeks since it, your last shot, uh, there's quite a few things you can do according to CDC guidance. Now, local restrictions might vary, but essentially you can meet with vaccinated people or if it's just one household that has some unvaccinated people, for example, let's say you visit your friend who has some minor children who have not able to be vaccinated yet, but those children are in good health, 
then you can visit. But if it's someone who has an increased risk of illness, then the CDC does not advise visiting. And they also do not advise large gatherings or medium gatherings, although they're not entirely clear in this graphic on what that is. Okay, so going over that really, really quickly, but, and we can cover that in more detail at the end if anyone would like. But let's move along. And I have Google Earth Pro. Now this is the, as I said, this is the downloaded version, which is available for PC, uh, Mac, and I believe Linux. If you have a much older computer, it might not be possible to install. Alternately, you can use the web browser version, which works best in Google Chrome. And I believe there are app versions for Android and iOS. So you have a lot of options there. All right, so I'll close this. And what you see when you open the program is something like this. You see the world. And it's actually a 3D model of the world, so you can turn it. And then in the top right, you have various controls. So how I was turning it before was I would click it and hold and drag it around. You cannot see my shared screen. Is everyone else able to see my shared screen? Is that the first comment? of that nature, yes. Um, you might try leaving the meeting and rejoining because it seems like everyone else is able to see it. Um, or maybe restarting your device even. I'm sorry that you're having difficulty, but it seems like it might be on your end or something between you and Zoom specifically. In any event, um, so you see the earth and you can drag it around using your mouse. Or you can use the controls, which again are in the top right. I'm trying to go over this slowly because I know there tends to be a little bit of lag. But you can click around with the arrows and you can zoom in and out with this bar, like so. Okay, so then, and you can also zoom with your scroll wheel if you have one on your mouse. And you can tilt the view by holding down the scroll wheel and moving your mouse. You start to see that some of these mountains here are actually three-dimensional. Just a little bit. So let's zoom into Salt Lake City here. I like to show this off in cities because you tend to see a bit more in terms of detail. Uh, the coverage of, I mean, obviously there's a uh, aerial photo of pretty much everything, but uh, the coverage in detail is, you know, it's better in big cities for sure. And because Google started in the Bay Area, it's really good in the Bay Area. So I have various layers on right now, and those are, those are in the bottom left corner right here. There's all sorts of information that you can add or remove. For example, these little circles that you see everywhere are photos that were added by users to Google Maps. And so, you know, sometimes they're touristy photos and sometimes they're from a review of a business. But, uh, you know, that is one thing you can take a look at. And if we go over here, I'm going here because there's some bigger buildings, so it should be more obvious. And we zoom in. I believe I do have the 3D buildings layer on. Yes, I do. And then I tilt it. You should start to see that some of these buildings are actually sticking out, right? They're three-dimensional. And as you zoom in, you'll have the option to go into either a ground level view or the street view. Now this is the street view, which is what it is by default, which is exactly the same as Google Street View online, you know, in Google Maps. 
Um, but then you can also click, there's this toggle in the top right to go into this ground level view. So you get this 3D approximation of what it looks like, which when you get this close does look rather funny. And you can see that they sort of, you know, this was probably uh, modeled by an algorithm that is say by a program. So I'll exit that by a program and not by hand. And therefore the detail is not quite there. And some of the shapes are a little bit weird. But at the same time, I do think it's quite an impressive technology. So other things that you can look at here is we have, you can add local place names. Now those are not always accurate. Those can be crowdsourced generally. So it's sort of dependent on people to add the accurate names. Um, information from Wikipedia, US government information, locations of parks and recreation areas. There is a lot here, as you can see. And sometimes, I'm not seeing it around here, but sometimes they have this little panorama thing that you can click into. I think there was one in San Francisco, so let's go over there. You can actually go in the top left and put the name of a city or a region or what have you in the search box, and then you hit search. And it should zoom me out and go there. Although it might be a little bit slow because my computer is not the fastest computer. I can email slides. I will email the recording link and slides. It will take a couple of days, but you will get the link in a couple of days. And hopefully at that point, you will be able to see the video if YouTube usually works for you then you'll be able to see the video on YouTube. That's where we host our videos. Um, I'm not presently at the library, so calling them won't get you your slides any sooner, but you will get them within a few days when I send the recording, just so you don't get inundated with too many emails. Anyway, so here we are in San Francisco and there should be, oh yeah, here it is, this little, I think it's this one little panorama thing. Okay, yeah. Come on. What does this do? Yeah, so it has this gigapan thing, this odd little orange and blue logo. And it'll let you go into that. Sorry if this motion is a little bit stomach turning. And it is taking a second to load, but I believe once it loads, it should be pretty clear. Yeah, there we go. Because all of this information is also coming from the internet. You'll see if you download this, that um, it doesn't entirely work when it's disconnected from the internet because they don't, they don't store all of the information on your computer. You can also see that there are a few oddities in this particular one where these vehicles kind of got cut off these are multiple photos that were connected together. So this is the kind of experience you can expect from these panorama shots, right? But we should have, if I turn to the correct place, a good view of the bridge. And there we have it, the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, so I will exit that and I will show you briefly one thing that I showed in the other Google Maps workshop, which was the historical photos. I would say historical aerial photos. I'm going to first go in the bottom left and I'm going to turn off the 3D buildings. And I'm going to turn off some of the other things, just, let's see the photos, just so that there's less clutter, right? And I'll zoom out a bit because oftentimes the older aerial photos are not terribly are not terribly detailed. And so then there's two places you can find this, the historical imagery. There's at the top here or in the view menu. I'm not sure why they didn't put it in layers, but they don't seem to have done. All right, so we'll click into this one at the top. It's sort of a clock with an arrow on it. And you get this bar here that lets you sort of scroll through time. 
And so you can see what the city was like from above at different points in time. Now this is especially useful if you know an area that had um, that had a lot of changes over time. But for most locations, they'll only have much in the way of photos in the last 20 years or so. San Francisco is a little bit better off. They have quite a bit back into the 90s, some in the 80s. And then they have tantalizingly this uh, 1938. You can sort of see where the edges are of it, that they didn't take photos over the water at the time. And then if we zoom in some areas of the city, well, it wasn't quite as built up back then. Like you can see they were beginning to put in the grid of roads that we know today. And you can do this over, all over the world, but again, some areas won't have very much available. But it's worth a look. And I will deactivate this historical imagery layer. And if we have any questions about Google Earth right now, we can handle that. Okay, it looks like we don't. I will mention one more thing that I don't use a lot myself, but um, so they have this flight simulator option, which I won't go into because I'm absolutely terrible at it, but it's basically a game where you control a little airplane and you can fly it over different cities around the world, right? Like it gives you a list of airports where you can start. If I click that, it gives you a couple of plane options and you know, you can start at SFO and start in Trekkie, et cetera. And I'll cancel that. But yeah, if you know anyone who's into that sort of thing, they might like it. Moving right along then, another option I wanted to talk about was Radio Garden. Now you won't be able to hear anything here in part because of YouTube's restrictions, because we're putting it on YouTube. If I were to upload a video that contains some copyrighted music, it's possible that one of their programs would identify that and potentially put some penalties against our account. So I wanted to avoid that. So I have muted the audio here. But what it does is it, you just go to radio.garden. So the URL is really easy. The address is really easy like that. And it pops up this globe similar to what Google Earth had. And all of the green dots are radio stations that are available online. So you can, right now I'm in the Philippines. I mean, obviously I'm not physically in the Philippines, but the radio garden is selecting the Philippines. And so it's selected this particular station, but you can also open this menu on the left and see different options of cities and radio stations within the Philippines. I think for some areas it might be within neighboring regions more, but uh, regardless. And then you can go to different places as well. Like here we are in South Korea, for example. And I'm going to stop that even though you can't hear it. And I can't even hear it because I have muted it on my end as well. Uh, and I find this fascinating because a surprising amount of like American music plays abroad, but also you'll find stations that play things that you would never hear in the US or that you would have to specifically seek out, right? And so you can get a sense of what people are actually listening to in different parts of the world, which is super neat. And sometimes you'll find talk radio stations and depending on the language, you might not understand it, but that's fine, I think. Just look around until you find one that's playing something interesting. Of course, some of them might not be playing much if it's the middle of the night where they are right now. Um, oh yeah, another note about this is that if you are looking for a particular radio station that you already know the name and the location and all that, you will want to rather search for them directly rather than going through Radio Garden because not everything is on here. 
Uh, you know, so if you're looking for that one radio station that you used to listen to in another city, it may or may not be here. Nonetheless, I think the fact that you can listen to radio from around the world nowadays is pretty nice. All right, so I'm going to move along from that. But we can come back to it if you have questions and go along to Google Arts and Culture. Now, this is a website that has a lot of virtual exhibits, as I mentioned previously. So I think I will put all of these links in the chat later. But uh, there are obviously there are other online exhibits that you can look at, but uh, a lot of institutions now upload some of their material to Google Arts and Culture. And every day they have a few featured things that might be articles or they might be virtual exhibitions or they might be videos but you can scroll down and see more, right? You can explore by museum, um, by artist, by country. And they have various games that you can play with. Uh, some of them will require you to get the app, which is available for Android or iOS. And some of them are playable in your web browser. When they say augmented reality, you'll see that various times on here. What that refers to is when you have the app on your phone or your tablet and it overlays an image of the piece of artwork over your surroundings. So you can kind of see what the scale of the artwork would be if it were in your living room, for example. Of course, that will be a bit more of a convincing experience if you have a relatively large screen but I think it's kind of a fun little trick. So let's go and look by museum, for example. And MoMA has a lot on here. And sometimes some of the stuff that museums have will just be, okay, they have a picture of the artwork and you can view it in augmented reality. You can view it in street view, which I'll show you in a moment. Some of them have the possibility to download a high quality version of the picture. I don't think this one does, but you can zoom in a little bit. If you click view in street view, what it does is it gives you that virtual, um, you know, that virtual exhibition thing, right? Where you wander around the museum and see what pieces of art did the curators elect to put next to it. Now, unfortunately, you generally can't get close enough to these descriptions to actually read them. So it is a little bit lacking compared to actually being in the museum. But, you know, when we can't necessarily get into the museum, and this stuff is completely blurred, oh boy. Uh, but when you can't necessarily get into there, I think it's still a fun tool to have. So we exit out of that. And I'll just go back to here. And they have this online exhibit. So this will be something a little bit more curated. Um, it might have an article. It might involve some videos or audio. So this one mostly looks to be an article, but you can go through these and read them at your own pace. And oftentimes when you get to the end, it'll have a little suggestion, see more works by this artist or something to that nature. Let's see, let's see what another outfit is done. So NASA is actually on here as well. A lot of the institutions are museums, but there are other, there are other things as well. So you can, for instance, go to this, uh, you know, they have a Mars 2020 mission exhibit, which again is one of these sort of picture heavy articles. It looks like, yes, they have a video here which you probably weren't hearing, but in any case, I'll get out of there. So 
So that's all things that you can explore at your own pace as well. And I'll just show you what one of the games looks like so you can get the sense of it. They're sort of, oftentimes they're quite simple. You know, they have crosswords, they have puzzles, they have a art coloring book. So it gives you all of these artworks and you can select them. And then, you know, what color do I want to make this part of the painting? You can see it does some of the shading as well. But you can come up with some, you know, if you wanted to do some more experimental options than what the original artist did, you could do that too. I will exit that. There are also, and this is less of a centralized thing, but there are also a number of gardens and parks around the world that have some form of virtual tour. In this case, this one's in the Netherlands. And what they have is a series of videos, essentially, where they have one of the gardeners talk to you about either the you know, the plants or the artwork, et cetera, that's in the garden and some of the choices they've made or how they care for it and so on and so forth. So they have a whole series here that you can look into. This is sort of the other style. This is Sissinghurst Castle, which is in, I believe, Kent, England. And so they have a virtual tour of the Rose Garden, which is another one of these panoramas, essentially. So you load into here and you can just take a look around the garden, but it's not actually going to allow you to move. All right, and that's actually, we still have about half an hour left, but that's actually about the size of the material I wanted to cover. So if anyone has any questions or alternative suggestions, now is a great time. And I will open up my slideshow again so that I can show you some of this information. Right, and I will stop recording in case anyone wanted to ask questions on voice. Thank you for coming. <laughs>